Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Marr. I am with Cranmore Advisors, and uh, I'd like to thank the members of the GRC for asking me to participate in this uh, Symbiosis Expo. I've been uh, hanging around the GRC when I'm uh, able to for on and off for over a year now, and I've really enjoyed the connections uh, that I've made there. Uh, so just wanted to give a brief uh, overview of uh, what my partners and I are doing uh, at Cranmore Advisors. And I will share a little bit of uh, some pictures and other things to go along with that. So hopefully this will make it a little more interesting for people following along. And here we go. So Cranmore Advisors, LLC, what are we? Uh, so our mission statement is to implement nature-based solutions uh, using regenerative agricultural practices uh, with multiple goals, enhance the environment, provide nourishing food, empower the next generation farmer, um, and also other farmers that are you know, considering these practices and operate with a commercial mindset. Um, and all of those things are done building off of the work of our partner, Mark Shepard. Uh, his book, Restoration Agriculture, um, which he wrote, you know, kind of uh, exploring through his uh, view as an ecologist of how agriculture has uh, degraded uh, much of the land on which it's practiced but that there is an opportunity to actually do ecosystem restoration in the context of agriculture. And it is uh, perhaps the most exciting uh, leverage point that I have been exposed to. And we have all the knowledge that we need to get started. Uh, we have a wonderful way of uh, bringing in new people, uh, new supporters and What's important now is to find ways to encourage us, speed it along and get the roots in the ground. Um, you know, we can do an awful lot. We can transform our planet in 15 or 20 years, but we have to start. And so what we are doing is working on a hub of farms using similar practices and agroforestry techniques in upstate New York to uh, sort of achieve a critical mass of farms using these practices in the region so that we can collaborate with um, harvesting equipment. We can collaborate with processing equipment. We can uh, potentially down the road collaborate in cooling product and bringing them to market and doing that value added foods and so forth. The important thing is that we get more of these systems implemented faster. And by having uh, close proximity in a hub, we can make each piece more effective, more efficient, and more successful for all involved. This is a, a farm up here in upstate New York, uh, Hayberry Farm in Hoosick Valley. Um, wonderful operation with uh, organically raised uh, beautiful blueberries, uh, lavender, mushrooms, uh, so pasture poultry, and this was a sloped area of the farm uh, that Lori Nickerson, the owner, was looking to uh, reimagine. And so Mark went to work. Uh, we we uh, designed and installed a water management system. This one-time uh, sort of intervention that will allow the water to be captured and held much more efficiently and distributed to areas that it's needed um, and should provide resilience both in terms, in times of uh, flood and drought. And then it also has transformed uh, the way this uh, uh, previously uh, bisected uh, field can be managed. Uh, instead of the water concentrating in channels that previously just ran straight off the farm uh, in these two areas here. Now the water is captured up high in, in uh, a few different water features and ponds, and then circulates slowly back and forth across the farm, allowing it to seep in and making sure it's available for uh, plant productivity. Um, 
it is sort of the uh, major limiting factor to all plant growth. And so by doing this one-time intervention, we are improving the prospects, hopefully for hundreds of years. And then after that, we go and we lay out our uh, trees uh, and shrubs along sort of the design that was sort of unearthed on the landscape uh, through that water management design. And now we're taking a look at uh, a similar installation. This is actually Mark's farm in Wisconsin, a new forest farm, which is one of the the best and longest established examples of this type of farming. Um, and, and these are all USDA and RCS best management practices for agroforestry. Uh, you can see here he, how he has rows of uh, perennial uh, trees and shrubs. And then within are the alleys that he has done all sorts of uh, um, different annual or perennial crops, whether it be pasture or asparagus uh, squash. Um, and each one of these curved lines is again designed uh, on or slightly off contour to manage the water as is needed to, to in that area. This just to give a sense for how these um, farms will develop over time. Uh, this, is, this is not exactly one of ours, but just to get a sense for what the early establishment of a, a hazelnut uh, shrub looks like um, as they come in. Now, here's another picture from Mark's farm. You can see uh, rows of hazelnuts, rows of trees, and in between um, acorn squash, I believe this is. And so this is maximizing photosynthesis, multiple layers of vegetation uh, from the ground cover uh, to the planted vegetables, to the shrubs, to the trees, uh, capturing as much photosynthesis and storing that sun's energy in the ground, increasing biomass, increasing niche habitat for different insects and birds, um, thus reducing the need for um, spraying um, and other interventions that we have trapped ourselves into with the more industrial uh, input heavy agriculture that we have defaulted towards recently. This is a beautiful way for us to break out of that mold. Um, and we can also incorporate animal proteins. Um, animals can be incorporated uh, and have an important role in all ecosystems. Their impact uh, is beneficial to the land, is beneficial to the, the plants. Um, they can turn things that are not useful or edible to humans um, into really high quality nutrient dense foods. They can enjoy a really good life in a habitat that speaks to their ancestral nature. Um, and they can be treated with care and respect and, and thanks for um, the, the fact that we are going to be nourished uh, through them. And so, as you can see, as, as things get established, we can actually incorporate rather large animals. And not only will they benefit from being in these systems, they will benefit the system and benefit uh, our labor by accomplishing tasks for us, like uh, vegetation management. Um, and here's a, a another view of the farm from a different angle. And as you can see from the uh, above view, it's very easy to see how this, these systems are laid out with a lot of thought and care in terms of uh, how to harvest and how to manage. But on the ground, uh, they can actually become, they can seem somewhat wild uh, when that perspective is lost. And I think that's part of the reason why uh, the biodiversity uh, seems to love it so much. Um, the, these are not exactly natural systems. They are designed and managed by humans, but they mimic natural ecosystems and all of the life that is suited to these ecosystems seems to uh, respond to that. And it's a very exciting thing. We don't have to take everything off of our farms. We can create uh, space for the rest of life and not only can we create it, 
the rest of life will be happy to provide their ecosystem services and we will have an easier time of managing uh, these ecosystems for their presence. And uh, of course, uh, early years, hand harvest, having people out to our farms is something that we are very excited to do. Um, down the road, as I said, you know, collaborating with farms to uh, buy more efficient harvesting equipment and so forth is something we have on our radar. And uh, that sort of collaboration is a very exciting way to uh, improve uh, for a whole number of farms and a whole region all at once, we believe. And despite the fact that this is a somewhat wild looking thing, uh, there's a lot of food being produced here and it's quite beautiful. And to consider that this was 15 or 20 years ago, just a cornfield. Um, we can do an awful lot. We know enough to really get started and what we are doing now is, is creating ways to, to do that, plant that tree, get those roots in the ground. And we are doing that in a way uh, where we work with existing landowners. We work with existing farmers. We are now working with investors. We just bought a, a first investment farm in partnership with accredited investors. Um, to go out and proactively uh, implement these sort of regenerative agroforestry systems and to speed up the processes of uh, adoption. Um, and we are looking to do more of this. And uh, if you are an accredited investor, we are launching uh, a fundraising for our second uh, farm that we are hopeful to have right down the road from our first. So we're really creating a hub of uh, these systems in the area. If you are in the upstate New York region and would like to uh, and have land or interested in participating, we would love to talk to you. Um, if you're in other areas, uh, Mark and his uh, restoration agricultural development team, they do this type of thing uh, all over the country. And we are looking uh, to kind of replicate this model of a hub in different areas um, at some point a little bit down the road. Uh, we would love to reach out and speak to anyone who's interested in doing this in their region. Um, the other thing is uh, please, you know, reach out via um, our email, cranmoreadvisors.com. And if you have any questions for me personally, here's my contact information. Um, on cranmoreadvisors.com, you'll find links to all of our social media and I know not everyone out there is an accredited investor who could join us in an investment farm, um, but we would encourage people to uh, drop us a line at cranmoreadvisors.com. We are going to be having events. Uh, we are going to have opportunities to come for farm stays. We are going to have product for sale, uh, pasture-raised chickens, uh, mushrooms, other things that all of these types of things are important for supporting uh, not just this uh, farm or our, the farms in our network, but any farmer you see who's implementing these regenerative type practices and bringing more life back to their farms, find someone close to you and support them. Um, and if you're interested in supporting us, we'd love to have that as well. Um, we are also coming out soon. Uh, and uh, again, we'll uh, post this on cranmoreadvisors.com and on our social media. But we are working with a group to come up with an NFT that is um, sort of a, a farm support NFT where there are different uh, benefits gonna be listed within the NFT, uh, including a 10% discount for uh, people who are interested in uh, educational events, farm stays, product uh, from our farms as a way for people to uh, get involved, stay involved, uh, order some high quality nutrient dense foods from our farms and our network and uh, have an accessible way to support and, and get a fun way to, uh, to get involved. And more will be coming about that shortly. Um, and again, I would also give a little pitch if you, if you have the means to give some support to the GRC, they do a really interesting 
and useful uh, function of bringing people together who are looking to regenerate sort of all, all portions of our uh, society and culture. Um, we are very focused on the land restoration and ecosystem restoration through agriculture. Um, as that's, uh, you know, we've degraded a lot of land and we have to find ways to get out there faster and um, do more um, piece by piece, acre by acre. And we would love uh, for you to join us or if you're interested in starting on your own place, wherever you are, give us a call. We're always happy to uh, talk and collaborate with people who are uh, working alongside of us. All right, thank you, and I appreciate the opportunity. I hope some of you have a chance to stop by uh, during office hours or otherwise uh, reach out at some point. Thanks. Bye.